Life is complicated. It's full of stresses and strains, pulling us in many different directions. There are rarely enough hours in the day to complete all the tasks that we want to, and when there are, we rarely have the required energy to actually do them due to the constant pressure of modern life. As a result, although we all enjoy it from time to time, few of us are lucky enough to be consistently happy and content. We only need to look at the alarming rates of mental illness to see that this is true. The saying, life's a bitch and then you die, whilst overly dramatic rings all too true for most of us. Life is just too difficult. Or is it? Imagine you are a leaf, floating on a mighty river. At the moment the river is calm, and it's a rather pleasant day. Birds are singing in the trees on the riverbank. Beneath you lazy, bright orange carps drift about. The breeze dances across the water, creating fun, playful little ripples. And the sun shines off the crystal clear water, just so. What is further downstream is unknown to you. You now have a choice. You can either fight the river or go with the flow. In many ways, both options make sense. Downstream, there may be many unpleasant things. There may be rapids, waterfalls, or disgusting pollution. The river may dry out, leaving you on a parched, dry riverbed to bake in the hot sun. It may freeze, leaving you trapped in ice, unable to move or breathe. There may be boats whose propellers will mangle you. There's lots to be afraid of. So it may well make sense to fight the flow of the river. Do everything you can to remain in this pleasant spot. Strive with all your might against the river. And maybe, just maybe, you'll be able to stay where you are a little longer. On the other hand, you could just go with the flow. You don't know what's around the next river bend. Perhaps it gets even better. On top of this, fighting the river is futile. You will eventually tire and the river will sweep you on its way as it wills. Besides, even if you can beat it, at least for a while, does this sound like a restful, peaceful, comfortable experience? Will you actually be able to enjoy the bird song, the fish darting to and fro, the cooling breeze and the warming sun? if you are fighting against a mighty river. Much better to sit back, relax and enjoy the ride. It's a beautiful day, why don't you embrace it to the full? The second option is thoroughly Taoist in its approach, and it is Taoism that we are going to explore in this video. In the West, most of us have heard of Taoism, or Taoism as it's sometimes translated, and we are familiar with many of its symbols, such as the Tai Jitu, or yin-yang symbol, as it's more commonly known, and yet few of us know what this philosophical worldview actually teaches. The key insight of Taoism is that happiness, peace and serenity are to be found through letting go, trusting in nature, or the Tao as it's called, and working with it rather than against it. Its founder is the semi-legendary Lao Tzu, sometimes translated Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu itself is an honorific title, which literally means old or venerable master. Traditionally, it is assumed he lived in China in the 6th century BC, although more recent scholarship tends to date him to the 5th or 4th century BC, and some scholars doubt his very existence. There are many legends about his life. One particularly well-known story says that Lao Tzu lived and worked in the city of Chengzhou. He was a scholar, who worked as the keeper of the archives for the royal court of Zhu. As a result, he had access to many of the classics of Chinese literature. As time wore on, he grew weary of the moral decay and decline he saw all around him, so he decided to travel west to live as a hermit at the age of 80. At the western gate of the city, he was recognised by the guard Yin Zi. The sentry asked the old master to record his wisdom for the good of the country before he would be allowed to leave. The text Lao Tzu wrote was said to be the Tao Te Ching, although the present version of the text includes additions from later periods. There are other accounts of him meeting both Confucius, who we'll explore in the next episode, and the Buddha, whose life and teachings we examined in the previous episode. Obviously, the historicity of these accounts, particularly the idea that both of them are true, is doubtful. Turning now to the Tao Te Ching, Tao Te Ching, or the Tao Te Ching, as it's sometimes translated, is the foundational text of Taoism. 
The oldest excavated portions date back to the 4th century BC, but most scholars think it was written over time by more than one author. The text is highly poetic and it concerns itself with the Tao or Way and how it is expressed by virtue or Day. Specifically, the text emphasizes the virtues of naturalness, Ziran, and non action, Wu Wei. Tao or Tao has a variety of meanings. But its most, most basic meaning is simply way, path, road, or principle. In the Taoist context, it means something like the right or proper way to exist. The Tao can also be thought of as the flow of the universe, which keeps things balanced and ordered. It can also be thought of as the undifferentiated ultimate reality out of which all things emerge. It's often portrayed using the Tao Jitu, or the yin-yang symbol. This image illustrates that the Tao in its purest form is undifferentiated and that it contains opposites within itself in perfect balance. The light and the dark, the male and the female, the hot and the cold, and so on. On top of this, the opposites themselves, in some sense, contain within themselves their opposite. Hence the white circle in the black half and the black circle in the white half. And there's some intuitive sense to this. The light only becomes intelligible when contrasted with the dark the hot with the cold, with the male with the female, and so on. All thing, um, things emerge from the Tao, and the Tao flows through the entire universe, guiding it towards its proper end. Ultimately, the Tao is ineffable and indescribable, but it can be known and experienced, particularly through observing nature and through meditation. The Tao, as it instantiates itself in you, and in as much as you follow it, is known as day. So, Tao and Day. So how can we follow Tao and Day? Well, we can follow Tao and Day by letting go and practicing Wu Wei. Wu Wei literally means non-action or non-doing, although it's better understood as effortless action. According to Lao Zi in the Tao Te Ching, beings that are completely in harmony with the Tao behave in a completely natural, flowing, spontaneous and effortless way. Why? Because they're not fighting against their nature and nature itself. Instead, they are going with the flow. Returning to our example of the leaf floating down the river, the leaf that goes with the flow is still doing something. It's travelling downstream, but it does this effortlessly, as opposed to the leaf who desperately struggles to go upstream, who may not be travelling at all. It's counteracting the, the, the flow of the river equally. Water is one way. It simply flows taking the path of least resistance. It doesn't strive and fight to go up a hill, for example. And in doing this, water behaves effortlessly. At the same time, water is also strong, indeed stronger than rocks. Given enough time, water can erode even the mightiest mountain down to nothing. Hence, there's strength in weakness. The Tao is often compared to water, and this sort of imagery is a common feature of Taoist literature. The planets, as huge and heavy as they are, are also Wu Wei, and effortlessly rotate around the sun. If they can move effortlessly, as big and heavy as they are, why can't we? So Wu Wei is a rejection of striving, and in the rejection of striving, peace, release, and ease can be found. The time I am least Wu Wei and most desire to be is when I'm getting out of bed early in the morning. The bed is so comfy, the room so cold, and the day ahead seems like hard work. Getting up requires an enormous act of will. It all feels so effortful. And yet somehow it, it shouldn't be. If only I could just get up without even having to think about it. This nicely illustrates the opposite of Wu Wei. Have you ever really enjoyed an activity? Perhaps you were playing a sport or painting or playing an instrument. And it was really great fun. All of a sudden you look at your watch and hours have flown by. And you've accomplished an enormous amount without even noticing. During that time, all of those worries, perhaps about work or school, that usually buzz away in the backs of our minds, were simply missing. This state is beginning to approach Wu Wei, and if only we could be like that all the time. As such, the true meaning of Wu Wei might be effortless action. And this can be summed up in the phrase Wei Wu Wei, action without action. Becoming Wu Wei is one of the highest goals of Taoism. One key virtue we need in order to become Wu Wei is Zaran, which means naturalness. It literally means self-so, so of itself, and so on. Things like that. 
Zoran is the basic and fundamental state and character of the Tao and all things. As we approach Zoran, we free ourselves of artificial and unnatural influences such as money, power, unhealthy ambition, stress, unhealthy pride, and so on. And as a result, we become more spontaneous and natural. We will become free of unnatural desires and selfishness and will appreciate simplicity. An often used analogy is that of uncarved wood. We are born in a natural state, but we lose it through the stresses and strains of life. We need to return to it. In so doing, we will become Wu Wei. We will act effortlessly and in accordance with the Tao. And as a result, we will simply enjoy life, particularly all those simple pleasures which all too often we ignore. On top of this, we will be free of stress and anxiety. That's a nice way to live, don't you think? On a personal and long note, one of the things that I really like about Taoism is that while full-blown Taoism makes substantive metaphysical claims about the ultimate nature of reality and the emergence of things out of it, its basic insights on how to live can be incorporated into a variety of worldviews. Take any form of theism, for example, such as Christianity, Islam, or Judaism. Whilst the theist will see God as the ultimate ground of reality rather than the Tao, the idea of trusting in that ultimate reality and seeking to work with it can be easily applied. Returning to our leaf on a river example, the Taoist will see the flow of the river and the river itself as the Tao, but the theist can simply see it as the will of God, or something to this effect, and can agree with all the subsequent Taoist insights. There's a slightly glib Christian saying which says, let go and let God. But in a way, that is a thoroughly Taoist sentiment. Trust in ultimate reality, however you can see it, and work with it rather than against it. If you do this, you will find peace and release. I think we can go even further. Even a hardcore atheist who subscribes to some form of physicalism or materialism, rejecting any form of spiritual reality, can acknowledge that nature must exist in some sense, and that ultimately the universe will do what the universe will do, even if that's understood poetically. They can then work in accordance with that rather than against it, and thus they too can accept much of Taoist teaching. So while some Taoist teachings may need to be reinterpreted, it seems to me that many of their teachings can be incorporated into pretty much any worldview, and that's a pretty good thing. So I think everyone should be a little bit Taoist, regardless of their other religious or philosophical beliefs. Whether you join me in that opinion, of course, is up to you. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about Taoism, I will include links in the description to two really good channels which explore Taoism in great depth. I'll look forward to seeing you in our next video on the wisdom of the East. But until then, I hope you can enjoy life wherever the river takes you. Take care.